This is a bonus episode of Renovating a Vintage Workshop Type Steam Engine. It is Sunday the 15th of March 2015, and here I am outside my workshop in Dewsbury, West Yorkshire, United Kingdom. And it's pretty grim up north in England, but today is quite a nice day. There's a little bit of sun, but it's still very cold. An ideal day to steam up outside the workshop. So as you can see I've started by filling the water reservoir and now I'm initially pumping some water into the boiler with the hand pump. This takes a bit of time because it's quite a large boiler. But luckily the pump is also on the large side so it's not too bad. And in no time at all really some water appears in the gauge glass. I would initially aim for about a third to half a glass full of water. Then I can light the fire. Generally it's not policy to fill the boiler right to the top because it will take far too much time for you to raise steam. So for the moment it's time to stop pumping water into the boiler and go into the workshop and look about on the floor for bits of oily rag and small pieces of wood that I've cut on the bandsaw. A better way to light the fire in the boiler is to use some charcoal soaked in paraffin. Couple of problems there, I do not have any paraffin and I don't have any charcoal either, but I have plenty of pieces of wood on my workshop floor. So it's a good time to clean up the workshop and get the pieces of wood, set fire to them and raise steam. I have used this boiler before in another video all about coal fire in model steam boilers. So the principle is exactly the same. Leave the fire hole door open until the fire really grabs. And the good thing about this boiler is it doesn't need a blower. It's a vertical boiler and there's enough height on the chimney to cause a through draft as you can see here. It's quite important not to feed any coal into the firebox until the wood has got incandescent. It's no good putting coal in at this stage, the whole thing will probably go out. I still find it quite an exciting process after all these years playing with a coal-fired boiler. The smell is second to none and it's really elemental. I mean it's only sort of wood smoke and later coal smoke but once you get the steam mixed with it and the steam oil something really good happens especially when you have about 10 to 15 psi on the clock and you can open the steam blower which blows a jet of steam up the chimney and draws the fire and in no time at all you can run your steam engine it's not quite as simple as that i had to move the engine back and forth with the drain cocks open to get rid of the condensate but i didn't show that because it's really messy or maybe i just forgot to press the record button i do this a lot i set up the shot look at what i'm doing and then i realize i haven't recorded it It's because I'm either in repair steam engine mode or play with steam engine mode, not be a videographer mode. This is my weir type steam pump that's attached to the boiler and feeds the water in. Which is a very useful thing because you don't have to use the hand pump then. You just turn a tap to fill the boiler and turn it off to stop filling the boiler. Time now to check the fire. Yes, it's looking okay, but I think a bit of coal on will be a good idea. And I'll also rake the ashes out. You never want the ash pan to fill all the way up to the grate because this will stop the air flow through the fire. I put this boiler plant together quite a while ago and I included a system for getting rid of the ash. Normally you would just pull the ash out onto the baseboard but it's very messy. I've got this neat collector that allows me to dispose of the ash. At this stage I put plenty of coal in the firebox. I wanted to drop the pressure to see how the engine would run at low pressure and here it's running very happily at 20 pounds per square inch. In case you're wondering why the whole assembly is rocking from side to side, it's not an optical illusion and you haven't taken too much medication. The reason that the engine and boiler are moving from side to side like this is because they're balanced, well not quite balanced, but they're on a large piece of wood across five Land Rover tyres that I have as a general purpose workbench outside the workshop. And the reason for this is, if my wife backs her car into a workbench outside the workshop, it will do a lot of damage to both. If she backs a car into the Land Rover tyres, then there's minimal damage. Just have a look and listen at this engine and see how sweetly it runs. I don't know how old it is, but it's pretty old.
Time to fill up the boiler now using the steam pump. This engine uses quite a lot of steam because it's quite a large bore cylinder and it has a generous stroke. And also this boiler is not really that big, it's only 6 inches in diameter. You can hear the tone change on the steam pump when I shut the bypass valve. Normally steam pumps do not have bypass valves, but on this one it allows me to run it just when I want to see water flowing, rather than just make it go when I need to fill the boiler. This is a double acting pump and it really does fill the boiler quickly. Here is a top tip for users of steam pumps. Hit it with a plastic handle screwdriver. These steam pumps can be quirky and often stick and it's not the piston sticking, it is the shuttle piston. There's a separate shuttle piston inside and on this steam pump it's very new and it's still a little tight. The main problem with these model boiler feed pumps that are generally made from brass is that if you feed them with high temperature steam at high pressure and high pressure generally equals high temperature which will make the brass part of the shuttle valve cylinder expand slightly and just nip the shuttle valve a little bit just enough to make the shuttle valve stick in the cylinder which in turn makes it look like the main piston is stuck at one end of the stroke but it isn't, it's the shuttle piston that's sticking and all you have to do is hit the area of the engine where the shuttle piston lives with a heavy screwdriver preferably a plastic coated one so you don't damage the engine and you will see that it frees and the engine runs perfectly so I'm going to modify this boiler plant so that the steam pump is fed from a non superheated source and that in conjunction with a bit more running in of the pump in general should make it work perfectly the regulations require that there is more than one way of getting water into a steam boiler a hand pump and something else so if one of them fails you're never stuck without any water with a roaring fire this engine does not have a mechanical lubricator or even a displacement lubricator. What it has is like an oil cup reservoir on the inlet to the steam chest. So periodically I'm filling this to make sure that there's plenty of lubrication to the cylinder. If you work with steam engines frequently and you're always turning the steam taps on and off, after a while you build up calluses on your fingers which are good because it means that you can stand a higher temperature but my fingers are a bit soft at the moment so I need to use a cloth. Always take great care when working with steam engines and boilers. Steam at a pressure of 80 psi is very nasty stuff and you can burn yourself quite badly either from the jet of steam or by just touching the metal parts. Old steam engines use a total loss lubrication system so from time to time it's a good idea to use a cloth and wipe away the old oil and then replenish the oil with some new clean oil. That's about it from me now. I'm just going to let the engine carry on running. So thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.